welcome to the hub dev call um yeah as uh, always please if you have any discussions any topics for discussion just add them to the agenda uh so yeah uh, i will start with uh, what uh, what we did in um, the last two weeks so yeah biggest uh, biggest thing is by far the guy v15 upgrade it happened today so yeah this is the proposal passed clearly last week um we had to change the actual binary because um, we had the emergency upgrade in the meantime right during the voting period we had this upgrade uh, this emergency for fixing uh, pff and that entered in 14.2.0 uh, and now we needed to reflect the same changes in the final release that we upgraded now to v15 so that meant that, that means that we had to upgrade to v15.1.0 and that seemed like to be some issues because of today so during to, because of this today so uh, yeah well, first of all thanks to all the validators for upgrading the upgrade took around two hours that was expected because there were uh, a lot of migrations but yeah as i said there were some issues with these versions and we need to figure out one idea is to actually delete a release like this one is deprecated we do have clearly mentioned on the release notes that is deprecated and we communicated this uh, but yeah maybe it's better to just delete the release so that nobody can use it because nobody is supposed to use it not even on a testnet or anything like this on the testnet to use the release candidate so yeah I like, I like that idea. To delete like, it? I think mean, we saw that today. People were running the, the binary that was set in the proposal in, instead of the one that was yeah. announced. So I don't know exactly what happens if... I guess nothing can happen because if somebody is using V15 on a testnet, they will just... Because the hash is still there, right? That You still have the tag. It's not a release, but the tag is... You could still use the tag, I guess. I don't know. So we need to figure out something here to have more clarity. But besides that, things went well. The hub is upgraded. We are finally on 47. So hooray. Yeah, really happy about that. Uh, next, Gaia v16. Uh, we we added the IBC rate limit. So this, as I said before, it includes a bunch of, uh, bunch of new features that we are adding that were enabled by 47. So one of them is the rate limit module. Uh, there is a signaling proposal on the hub already. Uh, and we already have a PR with uh, the module integration and end-to-end -end tests. So the next thing for this will be to, once the proposal passes, or we think that it will pass, we have high confidence to pass, to add the migration code that enables this. Uh, so in the upgrade proposal, we'll just at the rate limits that we proposed in uh, that we suggested in our proposal uh, these are so very conservative limits the there should not be the the user experience should not be impacted so it should be fine and then we monitor after the upgrade we'll continue monitoring this uh, flows on I, on the ibc channels and uh, adapt adjust the limits as we seem fit Cool. The other thing is the ICA controller. We have an ADR for it, so we will enable it on the hub. We also have the PR with, that enables this with the end-to-end -end tests. Um, yeah, so this is pretty much working in V16. In addition, something that I didn't put here, but we start working on the skip integration, on the SDK block integration or block SDK integration from skip uh, and uh, yeah the plan is to be done with that by the end of next week cool uh, another update is uh, interchange security with sdk 050 we cut an alpha release so it's very important to know that this is not meant for production so the code is there however the tests are not completely done so the reason we cut this alpha release is for consumer chains to be able to play with it, to test integration and other things, but please do not use that in production. 
So we'll continue working on it and we'll have a final release soon. Uh, also, I mentioned before ICS epochs, we have a PR. So the PR got merged onto ICS main. So the work is done there. Uh, next, we'll release it as ICS 4.1 and it will end up in Gaia v16. So this also means that once we do that, we do we can discontinue the entire ICS v3 line, right? Also, because Gaia is already on 47, starting from today, we don't need ICS on 45. Now, there is no chain using it. So there are three chains at the moment using the ICS library. Is Neutron is on, uh, is not yet, but I will upgrade to ICS v4 in the in the next upgrade. Uh, Stride is on 320, and the Hub is on uh, 330. So. We do not need 45 anymore. There is no chain using 45. Uh, hopefully there will be no consumer chains that want to join that want to be on 45. If that happens, then we should have a discussion about that. We do not recommend it. 45 is already end of life for a while. I do not see why cons new consumer chains will, will start developing stuff on 45. It's really, it would be really weird. Um, and yeah, once we once we upgrade the once tried also upgrades to ICS before we don't need the V3 line at all. Okay. Uh, next is uh, PSS. We we are currently setting a local test net for it. Uh, just for us, it's basically like a practice before going to the incentivized test net. I will let uh, I will let Haifa talk like Dante talk more about this. Uh, the code is ready, it's in review, but the code, at least the MVP, for the MVP, is ready. Uh, and we are still working on testing. So at the moment, we are also working with Haifa on this incentivized PSS test. And so we do expect that to have it done by the end of the by the end of the quarter or the end of the month, same thing. Cool. Mega blocks. Um so what we have here is the, the two applications that we were talking before, right? The SDK application and the basic key value store are running with the multiplexer. Uh, we had to extend how Comet, uh, BFT, and uh, SDK are working so that they you, you need a special tag, right? To connect these applications, to have support for mega blocks. We did, uh, did that, and now we are finalizing the end-to-end -end tests. Uh, this is uh, this is pretty much in a nutshell how with the update on this work. Uh, what we want to have is a, a short demo. I think Jehan, you are calling it something else, but yeah, pr pretty much like a showcase of how how this thing works. Uh, really excited about that. Uh, finally, MBT model based tasting uh, is uh, we are adding slashing to the Quinn model and MBT integration. So together with MBT integration, uh, it's currently in review. This will pretty much complete the work on expanding MBT, right? Expanding the model and uh, and integrating it in, uh, in, in this framework. Uh, we need now to better understand and anal analyze what's the, what are the benefits and uh, how, we can, uh, how we can move forward from here. Yeah, this is pretty much it. Any questions? If not, Dante? Yeah, um, yeah, thanks. Uh, just quick note, uh, I'd like everyone to meet uh, Violet. She's a new member in our team, joined us uh, yeah, just over a month ago. She's doing, uh, she's gonna be working a lot of on, the, on our automated tests and uh she's been uh exploring uh yeah how how to uh improve our existing test as well as uh how to bring in other tools like uh, strange loves interchain test into our uh arsenal um so hi, the, hi. <laughs> <laughs> um in terms of uh, stuff we've been up to in the last couple of weeks, uh, last week we ran a, our latest demo day where we uh, walked some uh, walked the participants through uh, how to update their validator info and how to get uh, more people to uh, assign keys to our consumer chains and uh, went very well. Uh, very good numbers in terms of participation. That 
hopefully lead to more people doing this on mainnet. Um, for next week, we're planning on doing another demo day, but based around a liquid staking module. Uh, we'll see how that goes, uh, as well as upgrading uh, both of our test nets to B15.1.0. They're, they're running 15.0 at the moment. Um, yeah, we were also busy in the last week or so uh, doing some testing and debugging around the V15.1 RC0. Uh, we, our automated tests uh, surfaced a bit of an issue around consensus uh, came, that came out of a migration code and uh, got fixed. And after it got fixed, we set up a mini testnet this Monday with a handful of validators to uh, make sure, like, verify the path from v14.2 to v15.1 uh, to make sure that like no, no, nothing got in the way of uh, a smooth upgrade other than high resource requirements. Um, but it went well. Uh, I think we've collected very good data in terms of validators who participated in this mini testnet, but uh, validators who have like consistently shown up for testnet Wednesdays. I think we've we've noticed very good like. Uh, uh, participation in mainnet events. So, like, if they went through the upgrade in our testnet or in the mini testnet Monday on Monday, then uh, chances are they're the ones like uh, setting the pace for uh, mainnet uh, on on uh, in Discord. So it's, it's good to see this. Uh, that's V15 for V16. We've uh, started testing nightly builds of the the main branch now that the uh, the upgrade handler is in place. And uh, yeah, like uh, like Myers mentioned, we'll we have started planning for the for the partial set security incentivized testnet. We have a good set of templates for uh, so we can build on what we did with uh, Game of Chains. And uh, we're currently setting up just local testnets to start exploring what kind of events, what kind of tasks we can set up using a partial set security uh, uh, for this new uh, upcoming testnet. And we'll be working together with, uh, uh, yeah, all the folks in the interchain security team to get all this sorted out. Um, yeah, any questions around this? Nothing to add here, but I uh, maybe have a follow up uh, from the operator perspective um, about uh, keeping or dropping uh, deprecated release tag thing. Um, so I think the major problem why we're still uh, seeing uh, crashing versions, even though communications were really, really good, I have to say, um, is that Cosmovisor uses um, the binaries that are passed with the proposal. Um, so it breaks automation if um, mm -hmm. we need to use another tag. Um, so I'm not really sure what's the best solution here, um, but but just wanted to mention that that's maybe the main reason why we still saw um, some diverting um, versions today during the upgrade, even though communications were really, really good. That's a good point. I think ideally it would be to use exactly the same binary as in the proposal. That's exactly what we would like to do, but yeah, that. Also, actually, it will be very useful to have governance proposal for software updates that take less than two weeks. I don't think we need, like, everybody votes yes. I understand that we it shouldn't be like by the, the, the governance should take a decision, the community should take a decision. But I don't think we need two weeks for people to think about that. I think something like up to one week will be good enough. Uh, yeah, I generally agree here. So, uh, and I know that, but I do not know if it's from 47 or it's from 50. I know that SDK is bringing these expedite proposals and uh, stuff like this, but I don't know exactly where they land. So I have to check that, but that could be one way of minimizing the risk that something happens during this period. Uh, also enables us to faster iterate over things, right? Well, we can iterate now, like, Every month we can have a release, but uh, still, if we want now to have a release next week, it would be quite complicated. Right, or in two weeks. Mm, is there a way to to have Cosmovisor to adapt Cosmos to do something with Cosmovisor to fix this issue? 
We don't have a canonical source um, for the newer version. We still need to propose it somewhere on chain. That's where, where Cosmovisor gets it from. So I don't think so. Mm -hmm. in, in this case where we, we want to, like we as in, uh, I guess, whoever's responsible for publishing the uh, binaries, uh, we we do want the Cosmovisor to break if we don't want people to run the binary from the proposal. It will break automation, but like, I guess we we need it to break so that people can actually use the right binary. Uh, you want people to not even try to sign blocks with the wrong uh, binary, right? I guess so. Although, but then uh, Clemens has like the actual operator operator perspective here. I think by removing the release tag, um, that should essentially do the same thing. Um, I think Cosmovisor uh, wouldn't be able to download anything and it would just, just halt at the upgrade block uh, and just 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 loop there, restarting. Um, so I think by re deleting the defective release, um, the proposed defective release and the binaries, um, that would essentially um, yeah um, be the same thing. Is it sufficient to remove the release tag or you need to actually remove the tag completely? Not sure, I have to say, to be honest. But I think it's uh, in the proposal, I see it, the link is um, github.com slash cosmos slash Gaia slash releases and then download. Okay. So I think if you delete the release, it should be fine. Okay, so that should fail automatically. I would suggest, yeah. Okay. Um, I also know that there has been or there is some active work maybe in the SDK about um, updating a proposal. Hmm. That would be actually bad. That and would again, be does it have to go through like how many days of voting if you want to amend your proposal? Um, it, it, would, it, it would essentially mean the, the tally would be reset. Um, so everybody would need to vote again. Um, but I oh. think there was some 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 work towards that. But given that we want to do this only in emergency situations, if we of if course. we don't have this two weeks period, I wouldn't yeah. want to just put the proposal down, right? To get rid of it, like just say, okay, ignore that. This is the new proposal. So basically submit one with 15.1. So if we have to wait for one week up to one week, that would be something doable. We just don't, don't want to always extend another two weeks, another two weeks because it uh, takes time. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, this is, uh, I didn't know about Cosmovisor. Thanks for sharing that. That's, uh, that's an important point. Yeah, of course. Cool. Um, any, any other things that we want to chat about? Okay. Uh, looks like, yeah, we're, we're down to 15 validators missing in mainnet. So it's, we're making progress there. That's good. I I would like, yeah, I do not know why validators take so long. There are some validators that take much longer. I would love for this to happen faster. But yeah, the beauty of decentralization, I guess. Yep. Well, okay. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy, Thank you. Enjoy your day. And Bye. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Marius. Bye. Bye, everyone.